everybody. Welcome to Emma and Auntie's adventure. Here we go. <laughs> One, two, three, four, let's explore. Hermione, bodies, and so much more. Five, six, seven, eight, open the gate. He's in our minds, I cannot wait. One, two, three, four, let's explore. Hermione, bodies, and so much more. Five, six, seven, eight, open the gate. Hi, Emma. Hi, Auntie. How's it going today? Pretty good. What about you? Well, Auntie, I notice outside it's so smoky, so my mom told me I had to come inside. My mom told me it's because there's fires burning nearby, but I really want to play outside. Auntie, I'm obviously not going to go near any fires, so what's the problem with a little smoke? Well, Emma, what may seem like a little smoke can lead to a big problem. So to understand why smoke is bad for us, we first need to understand the respiratory system and how it works. First of all, Emma, why do you think it's important that we breathe? Hmm, well, it just is, Auntie. Without breathing, I can't play or run around. Right. Well, you can't play or run around because without breathing, we don't have oxygen. And without oxygen, our body does not work. Right, Auntie. That makes sense. I mean, that's obviously what I was going to say. Huh. So the respiratory system is very important. It helps us breathe in oxygen, which is important for every part of our body. And it helps us breathe out something called carbon dioxide, which we do not want sticking around. So I want you to take a deep breath right now, Emma. Go ahead. Okay, Auntie. Good job. All right, so let's imagine now where the breath is going and what is happening. How do we get the oxygen from the air into our body for our heart and muscles and brain and all our organs to get? Okay, so when we breathe in air, we are breathing in oxygen that is mixed with all kinds of invisible chemicals or particles in the air. Our body, however, only wants the clean, pure oxygen. But unfortunately, our air comes with all kinds of invisible surprises like dust or pollen, for example. So it's the job of the respiratory tract to filter out all the bad stuff in the air. So we only get what our body needs, which is oxygen, Auntie. Yes. So when we breathe in, the air goes through our nose and mouth. So throughout the entire respiratory tract, we have these tiny little hairs called cilia. And these cilia help trap unwanted particles from the air. So with our first breath, the air goes into the nose and gets filtered through our little nose hairs to trap dust and small particles. The air also goes through our mouth and the air from the mouth and the nose together then travel down to the trachea or windpipe, which is a long tube tube in the back of our throat lined with what do you think Emma cilia auntie yes so in the trachea even more particles are removed from the air with our cilia at the end of the trachea we then divide into two tubes called the bronchi which also have what do you think Emma cilia auntie yes the cilia of the bronchi are very sticky and trap even more particles from getting into the lungs. From there, the bronchi carry air into our two lungs. The lungs are made up of millions of tiny air sacs called alveoli, and it is there where the oxygen from the air is taken up by the lungs and transported to the blood through our blood vessels. Once in the blood, the heart takes over and pumps oxygen all over our body through freeways of blood vessels called arteries, which take oxygen-rich blood to our organs so we can survive. In the alveoli, we also take carbon dioxide from the air, which we don't want, and it is taken back up the respiratory tract so we can breathe it out through exhaling. 
So do you know who does love carbon dioxide, Emma? Hmm, not sure, Auntie. Plants. So the unwanted carbon dioxide that our bodies don't want is very important for plants, which they will gladly use to grow nice and strong. Okay, so now back to the smoke. When we breathe in smoke, it goes down the respiratory tract just like regular air does. Down the nose, down the mouth, down the trachea and the bronchi, where the cilia will help to trap bad particles. But how much do you think those poor little cilia can take? They are, after all, small little hairs that are used to us breathing mostly clean air. So if we are outside for a really long time around a lot of smoke, do you think those cilia can possibly filter all that smoke? No way, Auntie! Those poor cilia! Exactly! I want you to think of your cilia like a sifter when you bake a cake with your parents and you have to sift the flour out. If you were to pour a little flour in the sifter, the sifter does a pretty good job at working, right? Yeah, Auntie! But if you were to dump the whole bag of flour in the sifter all at once, the sifter stops being able to sift the flour. And then what happens? We get lumpy flour. So think about that with the smoke. If we are breathing normal air, our respiratory tract works very well and can filter out bad stuff quickly. But if we overload it with a bag of flour, or in this case, a ton of smoke, then bad things in the air will not get filtered properly. When this happens, these bad particles travel straight into our lungs and can cause infections to our lungs and make us cough and have problems breathing. Oh no, Auntie. So, Auntie, what is in the smoke that makes it so bad for us? Good question, Emma. Okay, so to understand what is in the smoke of fires, we first have to understand fires and the smoke that they produce. The smoke a fire makes depends on a few things. Number one, what is the fire burning? Is it burning trees? Is it burning buildings? Is it burning grass? The things that the fire burns determine what chemicals are in the fire. Number two, how hot is the fire? Is it a huge fire burning a whole forest or is it a small little fire burning only a little plant? The hotter and bigger the fire, the more chemicals it produces. And number three, how far away is the fire from where you are breathing? The farther away it is, the more time the sun and chemicals in our atmosphere have time to interact with the particles of the smoke, which can create even more compounds and particles that we breathe in. So what exactly is in smoke that makes it so bad for us? Well, smoke is made up of thousands of tiny chemicals, oxygen, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and all the chemicals from the fire burning. Chemicals from wood or plants or buildings, for example. The most dangerous of which is usually 50 times smaller than a grain of sand. And although we think of this as really tiny, this small amount of dangerous chemicals can be really bad for our lungs. So if we are outside breathing in smoke for too long from wildfires, campfires, fireworks, or any other type of smoke for that matter, our cilia will have to work hard to filter as much of the air particles as it can. But some of these particles can sneak through the filters if they're under way too much stress. So what do we do, Auntie? Well, luckily, our good old immune system sets up to the plate to help us with those bad particles that sneak past the cilia. There are immune cells in our body called macrophages, and they help gobble up bad chemicals that enter the lungs. Now remember, again, if it's a small amount, the immune cells can eat them up. But if you breathe in way too many bad chemicals all at once, meaning that you're exposed to smoke for a really long time, both the cilia and the macrophages can't keep up. And so bad chemicals escape and can hurt our lungs. Oh no, Auntie! So Emma, the best thing we can do 
is if we are around a lot of smoke, is to avoid it as much as possible. So if we know there's a fire burning nearby, we should try to stay indoors where air is clean. Now, obviously we can't stay inside forever, nor should we. So when we have to go outside, then we should not be running around and playing when there's smoke nearby because running makes us breathe in more air. Think about when you are running really fast. You have to huff and puff while well, all that huffing and puffing forces more and more air into our lungs. And if all that air was smoky air, it wouldn't be good for our lungs. Got it. But Auntie, what about if we wear a mask? Won't that help? Well, a simple mask made of paper or cloth won't work for really bad smoke. The air particles are way too small and will flow right through the mask. We have to use a special type of mask called an N95 mask, which has a special filter built in to keep out tiny air particles. But these masks are really tight for the face and are usually made for adults or bigger kids. So it is best to just avoid going outside for too long and especially playing outside when it's really, really smoky. All right, Auntie, got it. Okay, Emma, let's review the respiratory tract. All right, Auntie, I know just how we can review it. All right, Auntie, give me a beat. You got it, Emma. All right, time to wrap the respiratory tract. One, two, three, four, here are the facts. Oxygen comes in through our respiratory tract. Inhale air through our mouth and our nose. Then down the trachea is where it goes. Cilia, cilia, those tiny little hairs. Cilia, cilia, filter our air. Then from the trachea splits into bronchia. Then down into our lungs made up of alveoli. Cilia, cilia, those tiny little hairs. Cilia, cilia, filter our air. Next, the alveoli get oxygen on the move, pumped by the heart through our artery tubes. Oxygen goes everywhere as fast as can be to help the body work hard and live in harmony. One, two, three, four, here are the facts. Oxygen comes in through our respiratory tract. <laughs> Nice job, Emma. Thanks, Auntie. See you next time. Hey, everyone. If you like all these types of videos and you want to see more of Auntie and I, please subscribe and hit that notification button so that way you can see more videos just like this. Yeah, we can't wait to show more about the human body and help you learn. Click that like button, please.